In good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sawyer Center. Southern Nazarene basketball is on the air. This afternoon, the Crimson Storm continue Great American Conference play on a frigid January afternoon as they host Arkansas Tech. Hi, everyone. Luke McConnell with you here for this clash between GAC foes, Arkansas Tech, the opponent today. Hope you're staying warm out there. It's quite chilly on the outside, but hopefully the basketball will be warming to the soul and body here this afternoon. SNU comes in off a sweep of Harding on Thursday night. The women a hard-fought 60-51 to win over the number 13 Lady Bisons, and the men an equally hard-fought 76-71 win over the Bisons to snap a five-game losing streak. The women look to stay undefeated today against the Golden Suns, while the men look to roll the winning streak to two against the Wonder Boys. We'll start with the women this afternoon. SNU 13-0 overall, the last undefeated Division II team in the nation. 7-0 in conference play. They've won 17 straight here at home, 27 straight in the regular season. Number six in the nation this week, and number two in the media poll, and looking to rise even further after today's game against the Golden Suns. The Golden Suns, 7-4 and four overall this season, 4-3. and three. They fell on Thursday night to Oklahoma Baptist, 52-48 shot, just 30% from the field, and an appalling 8 of 19 from the free throw line. Hard to miss 11 free throws in a four-point loss. But that is exactly what happened to the Golden Suns on Thursday night. The record doesn't quite show the quality of the Golden Suns. All four losses for Tech this season by six points or fewer. Also dealing with the loss of star freshman Patius McDaniel, who is out for the year with a knee injury, but into the first semester leading the league and scoring 22 points a game, six and a half rebounds and three assists per game. Freshman out of Springdale, Arkansas is a star in the making, but much like Jaylee Oglesby of several years back going through a knee injury after eight games, her freshman campaign. The Golden Suns having to go without their star freshman for the remainder of this season. But they did get a boost at the semester break with senior guard Maisa Marsal becoming eligible. The Grand Canyon transfer has made an impact already in the early going. Ten points, three rebounds per game in her first three games of the season. Tech, the top, deep, the top rebounding team in the conference, nearly 45 rebounds per game. They're a very large team, a lot of height on this Tech squad. Several players over six foot will be on the court today at the same time for Tech this afternoon. We'll see how SNU deals with that size, especially on those dribble drives to the basket from their guards, Emily Monahan and Lauren Reether in particular. Crimson Storms win on Thursday against Harding at 20 to 6 third quarter. The catalyst for the comeback as SNU trailed by 12 at halftime, but held the Bisons to 25% shooting in the second half to come away with the win over Harding. Crimson Storm continue to do things with defense. Number one in the conference in scoring defense, field goal percentage defense, and three-point percentage defense. Those numbers are good for 6th, 10th, and 13th nationally as well this year. They're also number one in the nation in blocks, or number one in the conference in blocks per game. 5.7 is good for 5th nationally this year. SNU and Arkansas Tech, 6-6. Six and six. In Bethany for the Crimson Storm, they won the last one in three of four here in Bethany. Overall, 10 and 18 against the Golden Suns in their series history. They won the last two and three of the last four, including the season sweep last year against the Golden Suns. For now, though, we await for this matchup today. It should be a tough contest. Should be a good test for the Crimson Storm as they. You know, deal with a kind of a different style of opponent than in other games this season. The size of Tech certainly the biggest factor. Tech not a 
tremendous shooting team, just 29% from three-point range and 68% from the foul line. Both of those are good for 10th in the conference. Big issue for Tech this year has been the turnovers. Four times they've been at 20 or more turnovers this season. They average 18 per game, which is 10th in the conference. But their defense is really good. They hold opponents under 35% shooting third in the conference and have allowed just two opponents to shoot over 40% this season. On the other side, SNU yet to have a game shooting under 40% from the field this season. Let's take a quick look at what to expect around the conference today as far as games are concerned. Washita Baptist out in Weatherford against Southwestern Oklahoma State. Arkansas Monticello is at Southeastern Oklahoma State. Southern Arkansas is at East Central. Harding is over in Shawnee against Oklahoma Baptist and Henderson State is up in Alva against Northwestern Oklahoma State. Running through the standings, SNU 7-0 in conference, a game ahead with the tiebreaker over Northwestern and Harding, who are both 6-1. And then those two teams are two games clear of a quartet of teams, Arkansas Tech, Henderson State, Washita Baptist, and Southwestern Oklahoma State, all at 4-3 in the conference. Southern Arkansas and Oklahoma Baptist, each 3-4. East Central, 1-6, and, and Monticello and Southeastern, both at 0-7 in the conference right now. So we are about five minutes away from tip-off. We'll turn it over to our pregame chat with SNU head coach Trent May. When we come back, the starting lineups and the opening tip, this is SNU Basketball. And hey, we're joined now by SNU coach Trent May, the Crimson Storm taking on Arkansas Tech this afternoon here at the Sawyer Center. And Trent, going back to Thursday's win over Harding, uh, just a thrilling game. Just your final thoughts from that one. Oh, just really proud of the girls' effort and, and just their composure. Um, so many words I can define this team right now, and those are two that just you know come to come to mind right now. Um, they're just. You know, it um, the first half um, wasn't indicative of the way we usually play, and and the um, you know in a big atmosphere with a great crowd against a great team, um, you hope you'd come up with a little bit more firepower. We didn't, but um, the girls did a great job of adjusting the second half, and they kept the composure and and they brought the fight to them on the in the second half. and did a great job of sustaining the lead when we had it, um, gave us a victory. You've had some really big third quarters this year. What's been the the key to that? You know, with that look, it's it's crazy. Um, you would love to know that. Right, if you knew that, like exactly, you try to fix that, and um, that was our that was our kind of our calling card last year as well. Something as a coach, you don't really want to rely on is that third quarter, um, and so you know we'll talk about it and you know see if there's anything that we can tweak along the way. But um, you know sometimes it's, I don't know if it's uh, what we say um, or how it's said at halftime that um, can uh, maybe light a little fire, you know, sometimes. But they did a great job, you know, and just defensively we came out and our girls were, you know, a lot of people were like, hey, what would you say at halftime? And, and that's a clue that we weren't who we were in the first half, but we turned it around the second half. You guys had, you know, a little celebration after that one as far as, you know, just acknowledging that a big win. How do you balance enjoying the win when you know it's a bigger game versus – and? you know, making sure that it's still just one of 22 in conference? Absolutely. Great question, too. Um, but I think for us specifically, you know, it's, uh, you know, we, we try to really celebrate each one. Sometimes they feel a little bit different. Um, but I think this one was different in the fact that, um, you know, we know that, that's a, that they're a tough team. They're going to be a tough team all the way through conference and even the conference tournament. And um, they're a team that should be on the national scene as, as along with us. And so um, that's, a, that's a big occasion. Um, and then second of all, it's um, we haven't had that kind of adversity this year. So I think it just felt a little different when you're, you know, the chips are down. It's, you know, it's a, it's a tough score to look at at halftime and then, you know, come out and then you put that third quarter showing on and you continue that through the fourth. And, you know, there was a there was a lot of things to celebrate within our team last night beyond just who we were playing. Arkansas Tech is the opponent today, another tough team. Mm -hmm. Four losses on the year, but all by six points or less. Yeah. What have you seen from the Golden Suns this year? Athletic, tough, um, going to rebound the ball very well. And so, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's the little things. It's, you know, people will ask if a team's good. Well, teams, there's a few teams who do a lot of things really well, um, even if it's small things. And, and one of the things, you know, rebounding, in my opinion, can change the outcome of a game. And so um, we got to do a really good job, make sure we can, you know, make contact on the body, you know, and then go find that ball and go get it, um, be strong with it. And, and so that's just one of the keys right there. Um, but we just got to, you know, combat their athleticism and just make sure that we're really solid, do what we do and execute. 
Tech's always been a team that's kind of been on the bigger side as far as height and things go. Yeah. You know, do, do you find that that kind of flies in the face of a lot of teams you face in today's game? Uh, I mean, again, it's it's uh, it depends, right? It, I mean, it's like you know, the, I don't know if they're as quick as some other teams we faced. Um, quickness sometimes has, um, I guess, you know, hasn't been a. a I don't know if it's really hurt us, but it's something that you really got to measure up with versus the speaks. I think we, if, if they're big and, and not as, as, as speedy, I think that that also can play into our favor. So, but again, it's matchups, but then some things that, uh, you know, being tall can, or big and can, can allow you to have a, you know, a plus minus in and the other things that hopefully it could, um, you know, give us a plus minus. So, you know, those are things you have to combat during a game and you got to find out, you know, again, find your strengths, make sure you accentuate those and find their weaknesses and try to exploit those. The Golden Suns have a bit of fluidity with their roster, losing one of their key players for the season and then gaining one at the semester. How do you prepare for that when there's, when there's a lot of, you know, uncertainty with that? As always, um, for me specifically, our staff, um, we're, we're really big on doing what we do. I mean, you know, it's like you got to adjust, you know, like they'll have to, you know, just adjust to us of, of like who's going to who's gonna have a big game for us. Because, again, it's always never the same person, you know, game after game. There's always the one that's going to rise up. And I, so I think, you know, for them, maybe an unfamiliar roster um, in a way, but at the same time, it's still basketball and we still got to do the things that we're capable of doing. Last one for you. Who's somebody that you're wanting to see break out and kind of have a the next step forward game today? You know, I, I mean, fair question. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mention a name. Just how much I'm just gonna say the bench. Mm-hmm. I just we need we need a great showing from the bench. And I know sometimes the coach has to play that bench for them to have a good showing. But there's gonna be someone's gonna come off that bench tomorrow. So whoever it is, we gotta have we gotta have a nice little spark from them. Well, Trent, thanks for your time as always. Best yeah. of luck today against Arkansas Tech. Appreciate it, man. Roll storm.
And welcome back to the Sawyer Center. The starters being introduced for both squads. Let's run through those for you. First, for the visitors from Russellville, the Arkansas Tech Golden Suns. Number three, senior guard Maisa Marsal, 5'10", from Lacoy Paulista, Brazil, averaging 10 points and three rebounds per game this season. Number 22, junior forward Dana Thompson, six foot from Miami, Florida, averaging 10 and a half points per game and 8.7 rebounds per game, which is third in the Great American Conference. Number 24, junior guard Clara Grace Prater, 5'10", from Valonia, Arkansas, averaging 2.5 points and 3.5 rebounds per game this season. Number 25, junior guard Alex Hill, 5'10", from Harrison, Arkansas, averaging 14 points and 3 assists per game this season. And number 30, junior forward Julie Wagner, 6'2", from Humboldt, Tennessee, averaging 8 points and 5 rebounds per game this season. The Crimson, or excuse me, the Golden Suns are coached by Dave Wilbers in his 17th season at Arkansas Tech. His assistant coach is Brad Palmer. For your Southern Nazarene Crimson Storm, 13-0 and number 6 in the nation. Number 4, senior guard Lauren Reether, 5'5", from Oklahoma City. The Putnam City High School product averaging 17.5 points, six rebounds, and four assists per game this season. Number five, senior forward Hannah Giddy, 6'2", from Melbourne, Australia, 12.5 points, 9.9 .9 rebounds per game, a nation leading 4.2 blocks per game. Number 12, senior guard Emily Monahan, 5'9", from Melbourne, Australia, 12.5 points, and four rebounds per game this season for Emily. Number 14, sophomore guard Jenna Bay, 5'9", from Shattuck, Oklahoma, seven and a half points and three rebounds per game this season for Jenna. Rounding out the starters this afternoon, number 24, senior guard Abby Giles, 5'7", from Searcy, Arkansas, 10 points, six rebounds per game this season for Giles, the transfer from Henderson State. The Crimson Storm are coached by Trent May, his sixth season at the helm in Bethany. Assistant coaches are Kayla Tucker, Sydney Salvato, and Greg Gilman. Great crowd on hand for this Saturday afternoon contest between the Golden Suns and your Southern Nazarene Crimson Storm. SNU on the road for three straight after this afternoon. But after today, after that three game stretch, SNU at home for all but three of the remaining contests in the 23-24 season. Arkansas Tech in their traveling blacks highlighter yellow Arkansas Tech in numbers and trim. SNU in their home whites, storm in red across the front, white numbers with red trim. Be Thompson and Giddy set to jump center circle. And Thompson wins the tip. It's Marsal with it as Tech moves left to right to begin the contest in Bethany. Marsal allows to Claire Grace Prater on the baseline. Driving kick, but she stepped on the baseline for a turnover. SNU forcing 16 turnovers per game, just ninth in the conference. Of course, there's quite a few teams in this league that run a little bit more of a pressure defense. SNU, not one of those. Tech comes out in a man-to-man -man defense. Reether guarded by the senior Marsal. Entry pass to Giddy, guarded by Julie Wagner. And that shot partially blocked by the 6-2 Wagner. And here comes Tech. Marsal dribbles it out to the right wing, dumps it down low to Dana Thompson. Thompson turns and hits the little floater in the lane over Jenna Bay. How SNU combats Tech's size will be a key for today's contest. Giddy, extended right wing to the top of the key, and Abby Giles. Giles, left wing, Monahan calls for the screen from Giddy. Turns the corner, drives to the bucket. Too strong with the shot. Loose ball. Bay takes it away from Alex Hill. Fresh 20. Excuse me, shot clock did not reset. Jenna Bay with it. Has to force it up. 
too short. Loose ball. Marsal has the rebound for Tech. 2-0 Tech. Minute 20 gone by. Marsal picks up her dribble top of the key. Looks for help. Gets it to Hill on the left wing. Hill trying to create space on Monahan Into the paint. Loops around her with the left hand. No good. Monahan the rebound. Monahan inside out dribble. Gets by Marsal. Goes up and under Prater. Missed the shot, but a foul on the rebound. As Giddy got the offensive board and was fouled over the back by Julie Wagner. First foul on Tech and for the game. 8.18 to go first quarter. 2-0 Arkansas Tech. SNU starts the game 0 for 3 from the field. Monahan inbounds to Reether left wing. Behind the screen from Giddy. Reether couldn't pull the trigger. Wagner... Goes through Giddy to poke away that entry pass. Here's Marsal with it. Tries to go behind the back. Reether nearly had the steal. Marsal got it back. Scoops it out to Claire Grace Prater. She penetrates into the lane. Kicks it back out. Marsal left corner three on the way. Too strong. Bay tracks down the rebound. Bay pushing tempo. Picks up her dribble. Looking for help. Is it to Giddy? Left elbow. To Giles. Top of the key now. Giles. Into the paint, steps around Prater, and was fouled as she put up the shot in the paint. Giles dealing with a bit of a nagging foot injury, powering through it this afternoon. Foul is given to Clara Grace Prater, her first, second foul on the Golden Suns. First free throw from Giles, too strong. Giles shooting 77% at the line this season. Tech giving up 21 free throw attempts per game this season as Giles knocks in the second. Two to one Tech. 7.43 to go in the opening frame. Wagner hands back to Marsal. Marsal floater from the GSC logo and a blocking foul is the call on Abby Giles. Trent May and the SNU bench can't believe it. Two shots here for Marcia, Marcia Marsal. Transferred in from Grand Canyon. Played 11 minutes per game at Grand Canyon. Two points per game. Missed the first free throw. Just one of six now at the free throw line to start her Arkansas Tech career. Second one is also no good. Thompson tips the rebound off the backboard to herself. Gives it back to Wagner from the foul line, and she knocks in the jumper. 4-1 to Tech, 7.20 to go first quarter. Reether, open, top of the key for three. Off the mark, no good. Prater the rebound for Tech. Long lead pass ahead for Alex Hill. Hill drives by Reether to the basket, and a foul on Lauren Reether is the call. Second foul on the Crimson Storm. Foul trouble, not something SNU can really afford in their current state. Hill's first free throw is up and good. Four of the top five players in minutes played this season in the GAC are SNU starters. Not a ton of depth on this Crimson Storm team. Certainly something that is developing. The foul is called on Marsal for the collision on the screen with Giles. Marsal not pleased with the call. That's the third on Tech. Entry pass. Giddy has it, holding at the foul circle. Gives it to the cutting reether, to the basket, forced it up through contact. Missed the shot, but that's foul number two on Marsal. Quite vocal in her displeasure with the call. Lauren Reether at the line for two free throws. Tied her career high on Thursday against Harding with 26 points. Knocks down the first. Reether shooting 77%.
And she goes two for two. Free throw attempts number 40 and 41 over the last six games for Lauren Reether. Five to three, Tech, 640 to go in the opening quarter. Prater in the left corner, open, given space, and she banked it in from the left corner in front of the SNU bench. That's a shot SNU can live with, but an unfortunate bounce there. Wagner knocks it out of play on the entry pass for Giddy. Dave Wilbers asking for it to be off of Hannah Giddy. Not going to get that call. It was either off of Wagner or a foul on Wagner. Pick your, take your choice, Dave. Here's Reether. Dribbles by Marsal. Scoop layup is good as it bounced off the backboard and kissed off the rim as well. Lauren Reether with four. Alex Hill working it into the front court against Emily Monahan. Eight to five. Tech with the lead. Hill to the foul circle. Behind the screen from Wagner. Now drives, split the defense, and got in for two. A little miscommunication there on the SNU defensive front. And Tech up 10 to 5 with 5.40 to go in the opening period. A little bit better start for Tech, who shot just 30% against OBU on Thursday. Reether missed the layup attempt, and her pass to Giddy is knocked out of play. Marsal saying she took a shot to the face on the Reether drive. She goes to the bench with those two personal fouls. Haley Wyrick in for the first time, sophomore from Piercy, Arkansas, averaging eight points per game this season. Reether inbounds to Giddy. Giddy hands to Reether. Reether guarded by Prater. Left wing, Bay. Entry pass, tried to get it to Giddy, but Thompson and Wagner combined to take that away. Again, the height. Here's Wyrick driving to the basket. Floater is good. And the Golden Suns have opened up a seven-point lead here in the first five minutes of the contest. Shooting five of seven from the field, they leave 12 to five. Now Alex Hill shoots the gap on that, knocks it out of play. And that brings us to our first media timeout. 4.58 to go in the first quarter. 12 to five, Southern Nazarene trailing Arkansas Tech. We'll be back with more. This is SNU Basketball. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days I like to talk about refining character. I think that we're all in process. and. In those collegiate years, those years of a university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. Welcome back to the Sawyer Center. 12 to 5, Arkansas Tech with the early lead over Southern Nazarene. Tech has been active defensively in the early going. Already a couple of steals and also shooting 5 of 7 from the field. Points from five of the six players who have entered the contest so far for the Golden Suns. SNU just one of seven from the field, three of four at the free throw line thus far. Monahan holding left wing out of the timeout. Two Tech players go down. SNU unable to take advantage. Here's Monahan now top of the key. Skip pass to Bay, left wing. Driving, baseline. Tried to get it inside to Giddy. It's knocked away and stolen by Wagner. So far, the Tech length causing some problems for SNU. Here's Hill. Spins into the paint. High over Giddy. Missed the shot. Loose ball. Giles has the rebound. Giles, inside out dribble, shovels to Reether between the rings, who barks out the signals. Left wing now, Jenna Bay. Are by the six foot Dana Thompson up top to Giles. Right wing now, Reether holding. Tried to go inside. Thompson and Wagner combined to knock that away. Substitution 
for the Crimson Storm. Carly Gassaway, the sophomore out of Choctaw, Oklahoma, in for the first time. And Jenna Bay takes a seat. Sarah Edmondson, sophomore out of Flower Mound, Texas, in for Dana Thompson. The two six-footers out there right now for the Golden Suns, and they have been quite disruptive thus far. Thompson and Wagner, and now Edmondson taking Thompson's place. Here's Giles, gets to Gassaway, top of the key. Now Monahan, left wing. Five on the shot clock for SNU. Monahan gives it to Giddy with three, with two, with one. Couldn't get it off in time. That's a shot clock violation in the fourth turnover of the quarter for SNU. 3.54 to go in the opening frame, 12 to 5, Arkansas Tech. SNU won by just three against Tech last year. Here's Wyrick tries a three from the white right wing and knocks it down, and it's 15 to 5, Arkansas Tech. Everything going in favor of the Golden Suns right now. Here's Hannah Giddy holding up top. Down low to Gassaway, who got free of Edmondson and lays it in for two. Great cut by Gassaway, got behind Edmondson. And first points for SNU in quite some time. They're now just two of eight from the field. And Claire Grace Prater throws that one into the SNU bench. Thought Hill, Alex Hill was going to fade to the corner. She faded to the wing instead. An easy turnover there for SNU. 3.09 to go first quarter. 15 to 7. Southern Nazarene trails. Reether. Cross half court. Hands to Monahan. It's Giddy now. Holding, surveying, dumps it down low to Monahan in the box. Down low. Forced it up through. Contact was fouled. It'll be the second foul on Clara Grace Prater. That's a fifth team foul on the Golden Suns with 2.51 to go in the opening frame. Prater stays in. Wagner takes a seat. It's junior forward Shelly Butler from the Bahamas checks in. Butler a transfer in from Mineral, Mineral Area Community College. Monahan misses the first free throw, her first miss in 10 attempts. Second one is good. 15 to 8, Tech with the lead. 2.51 to go, first quarter. Bounce comes to Wyrick. Works it into the front court against Lauren Reether. Into the paint goes Wyrick. Turns, spins, and hits. 17 to 8, Arkansas Tech. Wyrick with seven points off the bench on three of three shooting. Giddy. Guarded by Butler, who got very handsy with her, and that will send Hannah Getty to the line for two free throws. First foul on Shelly Butler. Giddy's first free throw, up and good. Giddy 11 of 16 from the line her last three games, just 55% at the charity stripe this season. Definitely market improvement over the last few as she goes two for two. 17 to 10, Tech, two and a half to go. First quarter, Wyrick creates some space on Rather and draws the offensive foul. Kept the arm up high and sent Rather flying a little bit. Rather certainly doing her part to embellish where embellishment is needed. It's first foul on Wyrick. Already the seventh foul in the quarter for Tech. See if that plays a factor later in the game. Giddy holding up top, looking for a cutter. Dumps it down low to Monahan. Monahan got free and smoked the left-handed layup. Got it back. Shovels it to Giddy outside Gasway. Left wing Reether. Her shot blocked by Edmondson, and Hill has the rebound for Tech. Monahan found herself wide open as the double team ran away from her and couldn't put the layup in. Here's Prater right wing. Nearly got away with a carry there. Here's Wyrick, right wing, guarded by Giles. Skips it out to Prater, left wing for three. And Prater knocks down her second triple of the game. Claire Grace Prater came into the contest shooting 7% from deep. She's got two in the quarter, and Tech leads by 10 again, 20 to 10. Giddy and Sarether, top of the key. Down low to... 
Giddy fading hook shot, no good. Edmondson the rebound. Here comes Tech. Wyrick with 1.15 to go in the quarter and a 10 point lead. Backing to the baseline, picks up her dribble, gives it to Edmondson, left elbow. 12 on the shot clock as it goes back up top to Prater. Prater sizing up Gassaway, drives into the paint, creates some space at the foul line, missed the shot. Edmondson knocks the rebound out of bounds over to SNU with 53 seconds to go in the quarter. Arkansas Tech just 29% from three-point range this season. They are three for four, including a two-for-two two showing from the team's worst three-point shooter, Claire Grace Prater, came into the game one of 14 from deep. Here's Reether, fires it down low to Giddy. Bumped off her spot by Butler. Giddy got around her, missed the left-handed shot, and it goes out of bounds on the carom off of Tech. SNU will maintain possession. Fresh 20 for the Crimson Storm, 36 seconds on the quarter clock. Baseline official already giving a simmer down to Dave Wilbers over on the Tech sideline. Reether looking for help, gets it to the cutting Giles. Giles across the paint, picks up her dribble, forced it up, and she was fouled. Tech bench thought it was a clean block. Official disagreed. Fouls on Butler, her second personal foul. So two on Prater, two on Marsal, who's checking back in for Alex Hill. And two now on Butler. Giles' first free throw, up and good. Giles did not score in Thursday's win against Harding, but did collect nine rebounds. Second one is no good. Loose ball. Prater has it. About a second difference game to shot clock. Marsal pounding the dribble at the SNU logo. 20 to 11, Arkansas Tech. With the lead over Southern Nazarene, shooting 8 of 12 from the field, three made triples. SNU just 2 of 12. Here's Marsal, inside out dribble with 7, with 6. Drives, forces it up, off the glass, too strong. Rebound knocked away from Giddy by Butler, and a foul on the putback by Marsal. It's on Abby Giles. That's her second personal foul. Just the third foul on SNU. Marsal at the line for two free throws. First one, clambers in. With one more yet to come for the Brazilian. Second one, no good. Gassaway, three-quarter court. Finds the arms of Wyrick, and that's how the first quarter ends. 21 to 11, Arkansas Tech with a strong statement in the opening 10 minutes of this contest at the Sawyer Center, SNU will have to dig from behind for the second straight game. We'll see if they can do it and how the second quarter goes when we come back. This is SNU basketball. My favorite things about SNU was the relationships I was able to have with people, with professors, with friends. One thing that was purposely different about SNU was the integration of faith into the academics. I feel like I learned so much from that that helped prepare me for life after college, to be a husband and someday to be a father. It was a really, really transformational time in my life. My degree could have come from anywhere, but my relationships with people, I know I would not have gotten anywhere else. Go to snu.edu to apply or to schedule a visit. Second quarter time in Bethany as number six Southern Nazarene trails Arkansas Tech 21 to 11. After the first 10 minutes, Arkansas Tech eight of 13 from the field, 
three of four from three-point range and two of six at the foul line. SNU seven of ten from the free throw line, or else this one would be a heck of a lot worse. Just two of 13 from the field in that opening quarter, including 0 of three from three-point range. Julie Wagner back in for Tech. Dana Thompson back in for Tech. Jenna Bay back in for SNU. She's got it now on the right wing. Entry pass to Giddy. Double team comes from Wyrick. Somebody's open. Double team went away. Giddy kicks to Bay. Bay with 12 on the shot clock. Up top to Reether. Reether kicks to Gassaway in the corner with eight. Back to Reether in the right corner. Five. Reether fires it up. Missed the shot. Loose ball. Collects her own offensive rebound. Here's Gassaway. Wide open right wing. Three. Hits good. Tech defense flying around on that possession. But SNU able to cash in the second chance points. Here's Wagner, turns on Bay, missed the shot, good defense by the sophomore. Gassaway tracks down the rebound. 21-14 Arkansas Tech, a minute gone by in the second quarter. Entry pass to Giddy at the right elbow. Looks for the cutter, it's not there. Up top to Reether. Reether behind the screen from Giddy. Dashes down the lane, hesitates, and lays it in. All right, split-second hesitation up top. Froze Julie Wagner from coming over for the help side. Five straight for SNU to start the quarter. It's 21-16 Tech. Here's Prater. Drives to the baseline. Pulls up short and cans it from outside the paint. Claire Grace Prater with eight points in the opening half. Is two and a half per game this season. But she is three for four from the field. Shooting just 20% so far. Here's Bay. Gets Thompson in the air, drives to the basket, absorbs some contact, threw up the shot, missed it, Giddy the offensive rebound. Shot clock did not reset. Here's Gassaway, another open three. Yes, ma'am! Carly Gassaway, 19 points on five of six three-point shooting at Henderson State last Thursday. She's two for two from deep today, and the lead is down to four, 23 to 19. Here's Marsal, scoop layup, missed the shot. She's on the floor. SNU is running. Here's Reether. Five on four. Left corner, Monahan. Open three on the way. It's an air ball over the rim. Marsal tracks down the long rebound for Tech. Up ahead, Wyrick. Wide open left wing, and she knocks that one down. Wyrick, a team high, 14 made three-pointers coming into the contest, but she was just four of 19 from deep over her last five. She's two for two today, 10 points off the bench, the lead back to seven. Here's Bay on the cut, on the curl and the layup. And a nice pass from Hannah Giddy. The basket opening up a little bit for SNU here in this quarter. Four of seven from the field, already 10 points in the period. There's Wagner, top of the foul circle, guarded by Bay. Outside Wyrick, left wing. She sets her feet, fires a three, and rattles in another one. Good close by Gassaway, but... Wyrick, just a better shot. Giddy, right elbow. Gives it to Reether, top of the key. Behind the screen from Giddy. Reether, all the way to the basket, blocked out of bounds by Wagner. 29 21, Arkansas Tech with 6.45 to go. Second quarter, Prater checks out. Alex Hill back in for all the shots that Tech did not make on Thursday night against Oklahoma Baptist. Dave Wilbur's asking for something just to delay the game. Inbounds comes to Giddy. Over to Bay at the foul circle. Bay to Reether, left wing. Closed out by Marsal. Here's Giddy in the paint. Pivots and is called for the travel. Marsal aggressive on the double team. Giddy couldn't get it out of there fast enough before the chair got pulled out from under a little bit by Wagner. Hill inbounding to Wyrick in the backcourt. 29-21, Tech with the lead, 6.30 to go second quarter. Tech on fire from deep, 5 of 6 to start the game. Here's Hill to the right block. Across, looking for Thompson, intercepted, stolen by Reether. Reether lobs it to Monahan. One dribble ripped away from her by Wyrick, skips it back up top to Reether. Right corner, Gassaway sets her feet, fires a three, just short. And Thompson has the rebound. Good look there for the sophomore. Couldn't quite cash it in. 
Marsal picks up her dribble up top, looking for help. Reether ripped it away from her, loose on the deck. Bay has it. It's a four on none for SNU. And Bay goes in and lays it in with the left hand. Marsal looking for the foul call to the official who just shakes his head. Another steal for Lauren Reether, her second of the game, 33rd of the season. 29-23 Tech, five and a half to go second quarter. Marsal hiding behind the Wagner pick, fires a three-pointer. That one's well off the mark, and Karam's out of bounds. Alex Hill checks out. Jordan Rollins, the freshman out of Mustang, Oklahoma, checks in. Rollins averaging six minutes a game, just under two points per game. Sister Jackie is a sophomore, is on the team as well. She is out today. According to our good friend Sam Strasner, the tech play-by-play -play guy. Illness for Jackie. Oh, nice give and go between Giddy and Reether. And an easy deuce for Lauren Reether, who's got eight points. Lead down to four for Tech. Five minutes to go, second quarter, 29-25, Golden Suns. Entry pass comes to Wagner. She's double teamed. Nice pass over to Rollins, and she got it off the glass and the foul. Double team came from Gassaway, and Wagner went straight to Rollins. And Hannah Giddy. Just a half a step slow coming over. Thompson checks out. Butler back in with those two personal fouls for Arkansas Tech. And that takes us to our under five timeout. 4.54 to go in the second quarter. 31-25, Arkansas Tech with the lead. SNU clawing their way back into this one. But lots of time left here in Bethany. We'll take time and be back. This is SNU Basketball. Coming up at halftime, we will talk with SNU men's head coach B.J. Foster, recap Thursday's win over Harding, and get things set up for you as the Crimson Storm take on the Wonder Boys. Arkansas Tech, winners of 11 consecutive games, 7-0 in the Great American Conference. One free throw here for Jordan Rollins, who is two for two at the line so far this season. And that one is no good. Butler got a, the rebound, but Gassaway got underneath her somehow and just took it away from her. Nice job by the sophomore there to prevent a second chance opportunity. Reether, left wing, behind the screen from Giddy, outside to Bay. Pump fake, pulls the trigger for three, missed it, just toilet bowled out. From the right wing, here's Marsal. Bay pokes it away from her. Bay goes diving on the floor for it. Marsal has it, inside out dribble. Bounce pass over to Butler, hesitates, got it back and scored. Lead back to eight for Arkansas Tech, 33-25. SNU just not able to get the stops they need right now. 2-3 zone here for Tech. Bay, skip pass to Gassaway, left wing. Entry pass to Giddy, outside Reether. Open, 4-3, hits good as Lauren Reether tickles the twine for her first triple of the game. She goes into double figures with 11. The lead is 5, 33-28, 3.45 to go, second quarter. Hannah Duncan and Anna Coakley at the scorer's table set to check in for SNU next dead ball. Marsal to Butler, back to Marsal, right wing. Marsal, use the screen from Butler. Into the paint, forces it up, and got it to go. 
Tough shot there from Marsal. Marsal with her first field goal of the game. Tech sinks back man to man on this possession. Outside Reether. Behind the screen from Giddy. Hides, fires a three. It's off to the left all the way. Rollins has the miss for Arkansas Tech. Marsal pounding the dribble up top. Under three minutes to go in the half. Tech with a seven point lead. Butler pulls up from the foul line and got the bounce to go. Free throw line jumper, front rim, backboard, front rim, and in for Shelly Butler. Here's Giddy, extended right elbow, holding for SNU. Shovels to Reether, top of the key. Reether hesitates, kicks it corner, Monahan back to Reether. Up top, Gassaway. Gassaway calling for the screen with 10 on the clock. Gassaway pulls up for three. Oh, well off the mark to the left, too strong off the backboard. Tech looking to push it back to double digits with a bucket here, leading 37-28. Here's Wyrick just inside the arc. Missed the long two. Rebound caroms off a couple SNU players over to Julie Wagner. Here's Rollins. She'll pull the trigger for three. That skips off the iron. No good. Monahan lets it go out of bounds. Giddy checks out. Gassaway checks out. SNU goes a little bit bigger with Hannah Duncan and Anna Coakley out there right now. And Tech quicks to substitute as well. Alex Hill, Claire Grace Prater, and Dana Thompson all come in. As Wyrick, Wagner, and Marsal get a breather for the Golden Suns. 37-28 Tech, two minutes to go first half. Let's see what SNU can do with this lineup. Monahan, give and go with Coakley. It's knocked out of her hands, out of bounds. Tech just collapsing hard on any of those rolls. Reether triggers it into Coakley at the left elbow. Hands to Reether. Reether curls around Prater. Scoop layup is no good. Butler had it knocked out of her hands by Coakley. Out of bounds. Arkansas Tech ball. Tech committed eight fouls in the first quarter. Somehow yet to commit a foul in this quarter. SNU just one foul in the period themselves. Certainly a something that benefits both teams. Here's Prater. Floater over Coakley. Left that one short. Reether the rebound. Reether pushing tempo. Head up. Finds Jenna Bay. Wide open right wing three. Online. It's short. And Hill is fouled by Monahan trying to snatch the ball away from her as Hill held it high. First on Emily. Second on the Crimson Storm in the quarter. 121 to go in the period, 37-28. Arkansas Tech with the lead. They have led for the duration. Just like Thursday night, SNU did not leave it, lead at all in the first half. Here's Butler to Thompson at the foul circle. She'll pull up and miss the shot. Monahan has the rebound. She's running, leaves it back for Reether. One minute to go, first half. SNU needing a strong close here. Coakley, top of the key to Reether. Behind the screen, Reether hides, fires a three, knocks it down. Her second triple of the game cuts the lead down to six. Prater walking the ball across half court. Looks like SNU will have the opportunity the last shot of the half. Reether kept the ball in bounds, and now a backcourt violation is the call on Claire Grace Prater. As she stepped out of bounds with Reether diving on the floor to knock it away. And then Prater came back in and was the first to touch it. Great hustle by Reether. Who, Prater was just going to let that roll out of bounds. So 33 seconds to go in the half. SNU can get another shot here. Bay up top to Monahan. Monahan pounding the dribble up top. Alex Hill. The defensive assignment. 13 on the shot clock. Here goes Monahan At the right elbow, kicks it back to Reether, left wing. Reether to Bay, top of the key. Bay 
Drives, kicks it to Monahan in the corner in front of Dave Wilbers, fires a three off the back iron, no good. Coakley, the offensive rebound, fades, fires, no good. And that is how the first half comes to an end. SNU cuts the lead down a little bit in the second quarter, but it's still a deficit at halftime for the Crimson Storm as they trail Arkansas Tech 37 to 31 at the break. We'll take time out. When we come back, we'll have SNU men's head coach B.J. Foster join us and get his thoughts on today's matchup with the Wonder Boys of Arkansas Tech. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this break. And welcome back to halftime at the Sawyer Center. SNU trailing Arkansas Tech 37-31 at the break. We're joined now by SNU men's head coach B.J. Foster. Get his thoughts on today's matchup. Second half of our doubleheader as SNU takes on the Wonder Boys of Arkansas Tech. And B.J. going back to Thursday, a hard-fought win for your guys to snap that five-game losing streak. It's, uh uh, pleased to get back on uh, the winning winning side of things. Um, was pleased with the effort. Thought I got a lot of contributions from some people, and um, you know now we got to do it again. Something that stood out: you go down by a point with a minute left, and then immediately that next possession, get the lead back, come down, and then get defensive stops on two or three straight possessions to really close out the game. How impressed were you with your guys' fortitude there in that crunch time situation? Yeah, no, I mean, that, that shows a lot. I think, you know, that one encouraging thing is we have had uh, some close victories this season, um, and guys get more experience and more, more confidence that they can pull out the close ones. And, uh, you know, you never quite know if, uh, you know, at that moment do they raise their intensity or do they kind of let up a little bit. And I thought, uh, I thought they did a good job, especially on the defensive end, still grinding things out and, you uh, uh, and we're able to secure it. As you guys have kind of all come together as a unit over these first few months of the season, who are some guys who have really stepped into that leadership role? Or are you still looking for a few guys to really grab the reins of this team? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's a very quiet group. Um, I don't think there's anybody that I would say just has stepped up in terms of the verbal leader. I think we have some guys that are really trying. But, uh, um, you know, I think it's a contagious uh, spirit when, when people care. And um, if, if enough people are caring and they can bring another guy along the way and uh, then you get 10 guys that really care, 11 guys that really care what you're doing out there and believe in what you're doing, care about the details, then, uh, then it's kind of a collective group that, um, that, can, that can do some good things. You went to a little bit of a different lineup a few games ago, starting Kent Gerard, bringing Jackson Edelmeyer off the bench, a few more minutes for Tyrell Coleman. What have been your thoughts on the early returns from that little tweak? Yeah, no, I think, um, uh, you know, it was just kind of something. Jack twisted his ankles a little bit in practice, so we, we made the switch. Um, you know, Kent always gives really uh, a great effort and high energy, so I thought maybe we could play a little bit harder, a little bit uh, tougher early on, secure the rebounds a little bit better with him in there. And, um, you know, then we kind of bring a little bit more of a spark off the bench when we uh, we bring Jax, who's capable of scoring it a little bit easier. And, uh, and you know, it just kind of balances out the minute. So uh, pleased, pleased with that shuffle. Um, you know, obviously uh, it's not set in stone. We could change things up today. And uh, uh, we could change things up in the next one. But... Uh, you know, as long as as long as we're getting five guys out there competing as hard as they can at the same time, then people get more opportunity. Your 
new to the area and getting acclimated with all these teams, also getting acclimated with, with the official officials as well and just building that relationship that's always important in games. Uh, what's your reaction been to the officials here as far as, you know, just the banter back and forth that you guys get to have during the games? Yeah, I don't know about building relationships. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see us going to dinner anytime soon, but... Um you know, it, the, it, they call it a little bit tighter out here. Then, then they, they let us play a little bit more out west. And so uh, some of these little touch fouls, I'm not too, you know, I'd like, I'd like them to see some people earn some buckets instead <laughs> of give some charity ones. And so, um, you know, we're adjusting. We're, we're, we're figuring it out. We're getting to know them a little bit. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it is what it is. I mean, they're in control. They're going to call what they see, and, and so be it. But uh, – uh, we want to be able to still play physical uh, without uh, uh, feeling that we're going to get a little cheap calls here and there and those things. But, uh, but you know, that, that's everywhere. I mean, no matter where you go, it gets called different. Anytime we travel out of region and previous ones, that you get the whistle called a little bit different. So we, we got to adjust. And I can say that every official has been a very, uh, a very kind person, so it's hard to, hard to get too mad at them. Yeah. For sure. Today's opponent, Arkansas Tech, first in the conference at 7-0. and uh, What stands out to you about the Wonder Boys? Well, they're, they're probably the most balanced team that I've seen in the league in terms of a good player in each position that fits what they do. Uh, they got a really good stretch four who uh, really can shoot the thing. Uh, real high IQ, tough kid. They got a real bruiser inside. Um, their two guard can score at all three levels. Um, is really a, a, a good player. Point guard's tough, and, and three man's kind of a, a junkyard dog grinder who can drive the rock. So, you know, I think that they uh, they have a real balanced group, and then they bring in some nice uh, some nice pieces off the bench. So, um, you know, tough task. I think they're a very good offensive team. They run a lot of uh, a lot of sets that aren't easy to scout. Um, in terms of guys remembering things, a lot of misdirection things, a lot of baseline screens. And so, you know, it seems like every team uh, always tries to generate a few 10 to 12 points of kind of uh, catch people off guard, whether it be out of bounds, turning people over, offensive rebounds, whatever it might be. But, uh, you know, they do it through some of their sets that they get into in the half court, and uh, and, and they do a good job executing them. And so, you know, we, we prepared. We had one day to prepare. We're, we'll we'll – do our best to get them kind of the concepts to try and uh, blow those plays up a little bit but um, uh, if we can take some of those away you know obviously that helps us and puts a little bit more pressure on them uh, uh, in the game defensively they've been quite stout the last five games allowing less than 38 percent shooting and 25 percent from three with 16 turnovers forced how do you replicate Thursday's performance, just six turnovers yeah. against the Bisons against a really good defensive well, team. Well, I mean, that, that's going to be key. That's going to be key all season long is, is taking care of the basketball. Um, you know, defending, rebounding, and taking care of the basketball. It's it's the same as blocking and tackling in football. It's it's the keys to, to giving yourself an opportunity to win the game. Um, and so, you know, we need to be poised. We need to understand that they can score in bunches. And, you know, usually – Mature teams, that when those things happen, you know, they, they come down, they make the other team play defense, they run offense, they execute. Uh, you know, we struggled early trying to get it all back real quick and then having a barrage of, of bad things happen. But uh, hopefully we're growing in that area when they do have a run or two that uh, that we can we can weather the storm and, and run offense, make them play defense, not turn the ball over and get good quality shots. Absolutely. Well, BJ, thanks for your time as always. Best of luck today against Tech. All right, appreciate it. That's SNU men's head coach B.J. Foster, the Crimson Storm, and the Wonder Boys coming up on the other side of the women's game. Here at halftime, the Crimson Storm trail the Golden Sons of Arkansas Tech 37-31. We'll see how the second half unfolds. But before that, we'll take a break and come back with scores from around the league, first half stats, and the tip of the third quarter. Don't go anywhere. This is SNU basketball.
Welcome back to the Sawyer Center. Both teams back on the court getting loose for the second half. Let's run through the first half stats for you. SNU just 30% shooting in the first half, 10 of 33 in the opening 20 minutes. 4 of 14 from three-point range, 7 of 10 from the free throw line. Arkansas Tech, 56% from the field, 5 of 8 from three-point range, and 2 of 7 from the free throw line. Tech last in the conference in three-pointers per game, 4.5 makes per game, so they're already over their season average on three-pointers. We'll see if that hot shooting continues. For as bad as they were shooting the basketball on Thursday, they were equally as good shooting the basketball in the first half. Teams even in the rebounding department, though, which is good for SNU. Seven offensive rebounds for SNU, seven second-chance points, four offensive rebounds for Tech, three second-chance points for Tech. Tech with a 5-2 edge on fast break points, even on points in the paint at 12 apiece. Five points off five turnovers for Tech. Three points off turnovers off seven turnovers of Tech's for SNU. Individually, Lauren Reether leading the way with 14 points. Carly Gassaway with eight off the bench for SNU. Hannah Giddy just two points, both at the free throw line. She's 0 of 3 from the field. Emily Monahan 0 of 5 from the field, just a single point. Jenna Bay with four points. Abby Giles with two points, picked up two personal fouls in the first half. Haley Wyrick, 13 points off the bench to lead Tech. Eight points for Claire Grace Prater on two made three-pointers. Four points for Shelly Butler, two for Jordan Rollins, two for Julie Wagner, three for Marcia Marsal, three for Alex Hill, and two for Dana Thompson. Looking at scores from around the league, Harding, 30-27 to 27 at halftime over Oklahoma Baptist. The Bisons sh shooting just 32% in the first half. Southeastern leads early third quarter against Monticello, 28-20. to 20. Both of those two schools looking for their first win in conference play. Early third quarter, Washita 28, Southwestern 24. Neither team shooting particularly well there. Southern Arkansas leads East Central, 44-31 to 31 early third quarter. And up in Alva, Henderson State, 30, and Northwestern, 26. The Reddies, 6 of 15 from three-point range in the first half. The Rangers, just one of six. Second straight game, SNU's going to have to come from behind. They've trailed by as many as 10 after one, 21 to 11. Crimson Storm have trailed for the duration. Pretty much a mirror image of Thursday night. SNU responded with a 20 to six third quarter against the Bisons. What will they do against the Golden Suns? Inbounds comes to Marsal with Tech moving right to left to start the third quarter. Starting lineups back out there for both squads and a blocking foul is the call on Lauren Reether. SNU bench shocked and appalled. The second foul on Lauren Reether. First on the Crimson Storm in the quarter. Here's Marsal in the mid range on the left side. Now she moves up to the wing. Reether right in her hip pocket. 15 on the shot clock for Prater on the right wing for Tech. Prater, driving kick. Seven on the clock now for Marsal. Marsal down the lane, leaves it over for Thompson. Touch shot, no good. Got it her own miss and put it back up and in. So Thompson, her second field goal and the lead back to eight for Tech, 38-31. Monahan with it. Creates the space on Alex Hill. Outside left corner to Jenna Bay. Bay, entry pass to Giddy. Faces up at the left elbow on Wagner. Into the paint, Giddy. 
All the way around Wagner, too strong with the left hand. Missed the shot. Thompson clears, getting now 0 for 4 from the field. Clearly a little bothered by the length of Wagner. Hill calling for the screen from Wagner. Kicks it to Marsal, right corner. Creates some space, steps back from 15. Jumper is short. And over the back foul on Dana Thompson as Giddy with good box out position on the junior from Miami. First foul on Thompson. Here's Reether driving to the right block. Up top, Bay is open for three. And she painted it in from straight away. Dave Wilbers with a sheepish look on his face, but he's been the beneficiary of the bank in the first half. Marcel all the way to the basket, off the back iron over Giddy, no good. Giddy has the miss. She'll lead the break. Cross half court. Kicks right wing to Bay. Bay steps in, pulls up from 15, and it caroms in for the sophomore. And the lead is down to three. 39-36, two minutes gone by, third quarter. In for a fun one in Bethany this afternoon. Marsal on the right wing. Up top, Wagner, guarded by Bay. Wagner pulls up from 18 and splashes it home. Wagner not afraid to hit the outside shot. She's got four. Here's Giddy, extended right elbow. Shovels to Reether, top of the key. Reether hesitates, drives on Marsal, got bumped, no call, laid it up and in anyway. Forty-one thirty-eight, and a foul on Lauren Reether, a reach-in foul. That's number three on Reether, second in the quarter. Now the official inbounds comes quickly to Marsal. Kicks it to Wagner. Another 18-foot jumper. This one's off the back iron. Thompson muscles out. Giddy for the offensive rebound. Sets her feet. Fires a corner three. That's an air ball. That's fine for SNU right there. Here's Bay, right wing. Entry pass to Giddy at the right elbow. Finds Giles underneath. Back up top, Bay. Bay giving some space. Giddy nearly fouled by Wagner. Now here's Reether, left corner, 12 on the shot clock. Reether turns the corner at the foul line, kicks it out, left corner. Monahan high, arcing three, hits good! And we're tied at 41. Six and a half to go. Third quarter, Dave Wilbers wants time as Monahan's first three-pointer of the game has knotted the score at 41 apiece. It's a full timeout. We'll take it as well and be back with more in just a minute. This is SNU Basketball. SNU sets the standard for innovative servant leadership. Students from every discipline are exposed to leadership opportunities where they can thrive. In more than 45 majors, students experience true integration of faith and learning, rising to be leaders in their field. SNU is the place for educators to take the next step and earn a master's or doctorate in education and leadership with over 400 ed leadership graduates serving across Oklahoma. If you're starting as a freshman or earning a master's or doctorate, SNU is the place for you. Welcome back to the Sawyer Center. We're tied at 41. SNU 
Outscoring Tech 6-4 here in the early going. Monahan switching on to Marsal with Lauren Reether having three personal fouls. Thompson forced it up, missed the shot. Dave Wilbers incensed that there was not a foul called. Baseline official says no, sir. Here's Bay for SNU, gives it up top to Reether. Reether, drive and kick, pass deflected, stolen by Claire Grace Prater. Three on one break for Tech. Prater all the way to the basket, she's fouled by Bay. Bay can't believe it, but she will go, to, Prater will go to the line for two free throws. Poor baseline official on that last possession was getting chewed out by Wilbers on one end, crossed half court and then got an earful from Trent May for something on the other end. Alex Hill checks out. Haley Weirich back in. Prater's first free throw clambers in. Tech just three of eight from the foul line today after going eight of 19 on Thursday in a four-point loss. Second one's up and in. So two for two for Prater. She's got 10. Came in averaging two and a half points. Here's Monahan on the cut. A beautiful find from Hannah Giddy. And we're knotted up again at 43. Seas are parting a little bit here for SNU in the second half. SNU have five of six from the field. Two for two from deep. Prater guarded by Abby Giles. She picked up two in the first half. Monahan overplays on Marsal a little bit. Marsal then lost the basketball but saved it to Thompson. Thompson holding left wing. 12 on the shot clock. Thompson to the foul line to Wagner. Wagner crowded. Back to Thompson at the foul circle. Seven on the clock. Thompson thought about shooting. Now steps back, fires a foul line jumper. That's missed everything but the backboard. Here's Reether for SNU the other way. SNU looking for their first lead of the afternoon. Giddy backing down on Wagner. Pivots to the middle of the paint. Hook shot too strong. Still without a field goal today is Hannah Giddy. Marsal into the front court. Left wing Wyrick drives baseline. Trying to create space, forces it up off the glass and good. Haley Wyrick right to the bucket. She's got 15 today to lead Tech. And Tech back up by two, 45-43. Giddy extended right elbow, gets it down low to Monahan. Pump fake, puts it up and in. Wyrick flew by on the pump fake. Monahan, a great job keeping her feet set. And we're tied again at 45. Four and a half to go, third quarter. Marsal slows it down at the SNU logo. Trying to get free of Monahan. Now drives, Bay steps over, and a flop warning is issued to Jenna Bay. And that is the right call there. Bay went down quite easily there with minimal contact. Substitutions here for Tech, but not before a timeout on the court. 4.15 to go third quarter. 45 apiece is our score at the Sawyer Center between the Golden Suns and the Crimson Storm. We'll take a break and be back with more. This is SNU Basketball. Renew is the University Counseling Center. We are located at 6710 Northwest 43rd Street, just north of the Webster Commons. Renew offers a variety of services, including individual counseling, couples counseling, and psychoeducational workshops. The first five sessions for students are free, and students will never pay more than $10 per session. Faculty counseling is just $40 per session. Renew is open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Fridays from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. For more information, visit renew.snu.edu or email renew at mail.snu.edu. Forty-five apiece between Arkansas Tech and Southern Nazarene. Luke McConnell with you this frigid January afternoon in Bethany. Scores for both teams about three times higher than the degrees outside right now. 
Claire Grace Prater inbounding for Arkansas Tech. Inbounds to Wyrick. 20-foot jumper is short. Alex Hill, the offensive rebound, forced it back up and fouled by Monahan. Looked like she got a lot of ball on that. Second on Emily, and the fourth team foul on the Crimson Storm in the period. Tech with just one foul in the period after picking up eight in the first quarter. That foul in this quarter is their only one since as Hill front rims the first free throw, 70% at the line this season. Been at the foul line every game this season and attempted at least four in 10 out of the 11 games. She splits the pair. Tech takes a one-point lead, 46-48. SNU still has not led this afternoon. They're looking to do that right here. Foul on Tech, right on Q. It's on Alex Hill. Her first, second team foul on the Golden Suns. 3.59 to play in the third quarter. Shelly Butler... Alex Hill and Sarah Edmondson out there for Tech out of the timeout. Bay holding. Entry pass to Giddy. Right block. Backing down on Butler. Goes to the other shoulder. Off the glass. Too strong again from Giddy. Again, yet to hit a field goal. 0 for 6 now. Prater drives by Reether to the basket. High off the glass. No good. Edmondson corrals the wild carom outside. Wyrick wide open three. That's off the back iron. Giddy up high for the rebound. Gives it up to Jenna Bay. Trent May imploring her to push tempo. Giles up top to Reether. Here's Giddy, extended right elbow. Monahan calling for it inside, trying to battle with Hill. Reether with 10 on the clock, inside out dribble, runs over Shelly Butler. Offensive foul is on Lauren Reether, and that is the fourth personal foul on Lauren Reether with three minutes to go in the third quarter. So Lauren Reether has to sit down with SNU trailing by one. Trent May not pleased with the call. Hill gets it into Prater. Gassaway is in for Reether. Some adversity that SNU yet to face today. And really yet this season. Here's Prater looking for Hill. Collision. Bay takes it away from her. Shovels to Giddy. Nice job by the sophomore. Giddy picks up her dribble and gets it over to Monahan. 2.40 to go in the third quarter. 46-45. Arkansas Tech with the lead. SNU has yet to lead. Hannah Giddy has not made a field goal. Lauren Reether is on the bench with four fouls, and yet it's a one-point game. Here's Monahan, left wing, 10 on the shot clock. See what the veteran Crimson Storm can do. Butler is grabbed and fouled. She fouled Monahan, trying to grab the tie up, but got a lot more arm than anything else. So Emily Monahan to the line for two free throws, trying to give SNU their first. Edmondson and Butler out. Thompson and Wagner back in for Tech. Monahan's first is up and in. And Monaghan second gives SNU their first lead of the game, 47-46. 2.20 to go, third quarter. Hill across the timeline. Working at the right elbow. Drives on Monaghan. Steps, steps, pivots. Finds Wagner at the foul line. Throws up the jumper. It's short. Giddy holds off Thompson for the rebound. Here's Monaghan. Running the point for the Crimson Storm. Right wing to Giles. Up top, Gassaway. Gassaway over to Monahan on the left wing, who seems to be in a bit of pain herself. Here's Gassaway, right wing, looking for help. 
Behind the screen from Giddy. Seven on the clock to Giddy at the foul line. Giddy needing help. Giddy backing down. Got around Wagner. A lot of contact there. No call. Missed the shot again. Here's Prater. Dashing into the front court, drives to the basket. Scoop layup is good. Claire Grace Prater with 12 points today. And Tech back on top, 48-47. One thirteen to go, third quarter. Tech by one and a foul on Tech. It's on Alex Hill holding Emily Monahan. Her second. Fourth team foul on Tech. Marsal back in. Hill takes a seat. Monahan, right wing. Down low to Giddy. Giddy backing down on Wagner. Kick left corner bay. Drives baseline on Thompson. Got underneath her. Blocked from behind by Thompson. Excellent defensive play by the junior. Here's Wyrick. Across the paint outside Marsal. Marsal. To Wagner, foul circle jumper. That one's short. Thompson, the offensive rebound. Forced it back up over Giddy. Missed everything. Dave Wilbers wanted a foul. Thompson wasn't touched. He just missed everything. Here's Monahan. Drives to the left block to Giddy at the foul line. Giddy backing down on Wagner. Forces up the baby hook and it crawls over the rim and in. And Hannah Giddy finally breaks the lid on the basket. With 23 seconds to go in the quarter, 49-48 SNU with the lead. Marsal burning clock up top. Monahan in defense. Marsal flat, Monahan flattened on the screen by Wagner. Offensive foul on Julie Wagner, and Monahan is down for a minute. The SNU bench not pleased. With that, Wagner came up high and hard. Emily's going to check out of the game for a minute. Lauren Reether back in with three personal, four personal fouls. Seven and a half seconds to go in the quarter. Reether across half court. Drives all the way past Marsal. All the way to the basket. She lays it in. Coast to coast. Lauren Reether. And SNU takes a three-point lead into the final quarter. What a drive from Lauren Reether. And SNU overcoming the six-point halftime deficit. They lead 51-48. We'll take time and come back with the final 10 minutes. This is SNU basketball. It's a beautiful morning, Scotty, and we have an early game today. That injured list, it's getting longer by the minute. Not to mention, uh, there's apparently a nasty virus sweeping through the locker room. Yeah, but these players, they're in good hands. All of them need to feel their best this season, Scotty. Yes, they do, Jack, because this team is on track to win it all this year. Every day, Mercy's team is ready to take care of yours, bringing you the care you need now. Find out all the ways to access Mercy at mercynow.net. It's the start of the fourth quarter in Bethany. SNU leads by three, 51-48. SNU trailed by 10 after one by six at halftime. Now leads by three after a 20-11 third quarter. Lauren Reether out there with four personal fouls. Emily Monahan still getting checked out on the training bench behind the SNU bench. Outside, Gassaway open left wing for three. It's short. Wyrick the rebound for Arkansas Tech. Gassaway now three, two of six from deep this afternoon. Eight points off the bench. Marsal guarded by Reether, trying to get her out of the game. 
Spins away from her. And nearly too strong with the layup, but it clambers in for two. Marsal with five points. Down low, Giddy missed the shot. A wide open look there for Giddy. Was challenged late. Good find by Gassaway. Marsal bumped. Wagner outside Prater. Prater to the GAC logo, crosses over on Gasway, forces it up, and it clambers in. Tech has gotten quite a number of bounces this afternoon. And they retake the lead, 52-51, one minute to gone by in the final quarter. Here's Reether behind the Giddy pick. Down low to Giddy. Giddy backing down on Wagner, spins to the left hand, left it short again. Tough day for Hannah Giddy. One of ten from the field. Seven rebounds, seven assists, just four points. SNU trails by one, 52-51. A perfect season on the line right now. Thompson hands to Prater, right wing. Prater to the basket, forced it up, left it short. Bay has the rebound for SNU. Gives it up to Reether across half court. Reether calling for the screen from Giddy. Reether heads right, drives, hesitates, throws it up, and lays it in. Lauren Reether so quick on the dribble drive. She's got 20 for the seventh time this season. And SNU back on the high side, 53 to 52. Marsal pounding the dribble up top with Abby Giles on her. Emily Monahan set to check back in for SNU. Ooh, Marsal. Dangling that ball right in front of Giles. Kicks it out to Thompson, left corner. Eight on the shot clock. Thompson tried to go up top to Weirich. Stolen by Reether. Three on two break. Reether hesitates. Drives by Weirich. Left hand layup, no good. Loose ball. Thompson snatches it away. Prater fires a baseball pass for Marsal. She gathers it in. Missed the layup. Weirich has it. Giddy altered Weirich's shot. And SNU has possession again. Helter skelter sequence there. A stoppage as Dana Thompson comes up hobbling. She heads to the bench. Marsal checks out as well for Tech. Reether checks out with those four fouls. Monahan is back in for SNU. Butler and Hill return for Tech. Twenty-two on the shot clock for Hannah Giddy, holding at the right elbow. Hands to Monahan. Monahan drives, and that's an offensive offensive foul is called on Monahan. Hill went down no worse than Jenna Bay did earlier in the game. And Trent May is furious. Third foul on Emily Monahan. A flop warning should have been issued to Alex Hill on that one. All about composure right now for the Crimson Storm, up by one, 53-52. Monahan rips it away, and it caroms out of bounds off of Monahan. 6.47 to go, 53-52. The mood is tense here at the Sawyer Center. Prater with 14 on the shot clock, guarded by Gassaway. Goes behind the screen from Wagner at the top of the key. Drives to the right block. Turns, fades, fires, misses. Giddy the rebound. Nine rebounds for Hannah Giddy. Still doing what she can defensively. And sharing the basketball. Giddy holding. Right elbow gives it to Gassaway. Gassaway with 10 on the shot clock. Behind the screen from Giddy. Back to the right elbow and Hannah Giddy. Three on the clock. Giddy driving to the basket. Forced it up. No good again. Butler the rebound. Prater is fouled by Monahan in the backcourt. That's the fourth on Monahan, and Trent May is about to lose his mind. So four on Reether, four on Monahan. 6.02 to play. 
Butler to Wyrick to the basket. Left-hand layup good with six minutes to go. Tech on top by one, 54-53. Bay on the right wing, guarded by Butler. Behind the screen from Giddy. Bay kicks it out, Monahan left wing. Monahan and a whistle and a foul, and that's a makeup call if I've ever seen one. Foul on Alex Hill, her third. Lauren Reether coming back in with 5.39 to go. SNU trailing by one, 54-53. Monahan and Reether each with four personal fouls. No Tech player in much danger foul-wise. Hill has three, now Butler has three. Both of them are out there right now. Here's Reether on the right wing, gives it to Giddy. Right block, Giddy cross court skip pass Bay, open, left wing three, it's too strong. Reether tips the rebound to Giddy, goes to the basket, puts it up and in. No foul is called as Prater tried to take a charge. And it's 55-54, SNU on the high side, 5.15 to play. Hill, right corner for three, no good, skipped over the far iron. Giles clears for SNU. We threw across half court halfway through the fourth quarter in a tense, hard-fought GAC contest. Giddy at the foul circle. Kicks it to Giles, left corner. Giles into the paint, to the foul line. Now back to Bay. Bay cut off by Wyrick. Four on the clock. Giles is going to have to hurry. Step back three on the way from Giles. It's an air ball and a turnover for the Crimson Storm. 4.38 to play, SNU leads by one, 55-54. An exciting final few minutes coming up on the other side of this break. This is SNU Basketball. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days I like to talk about refining character. I think that we're all in process. and. In those collegiate years, those years of a university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. Welcome back to the Sawyer Center. SNU clinging to a one-point lead, 55-54. SNU did not lead the entire first half. They've only led by as many as three. Tech led by 10 after one. SNU's kept it under that margin since. Marsal and Thompson back in for Tech out of the timeout. Original starting five out there for SNU with both Emily Monahan and Lauren Reether each with four. Here's Marsal up top, Wyrick driving to the bucket. Left-hand layup is good. And Haley Wyrick, 19 points today off the bench. SNU down by one. Once again, 56-55, 4-10 to go in the ball game. Down low, Hannah Giddy backing on Wagner. Pivots to the left hand. Got it to go. Hannah Giddy just 3 of 13 from the field today, but that bucket puts SNU back on top by one, 57-56. Alex Hill working up top with the left-hand dribble. Up top, Wyrick. Wyrick behind the screen from Wagner, pulls the trigger for three. It's no good. Alex Hill, the offensive rebound, put it back up. She was fouled by Monahan, and that's it for Emily. That is the 
Monahan checks out with 10 points, five rebounds today. It'll be Carly Gassaway, the sophomore who's checking in for her. Hill's first free throw, no good. Second one from Hill, up and in. We're tied at 57, 3.35 to go. Free through across half court, behind the screen from Gassaway. Fires it to Bay, left corner, left wide open, in and out on the three. Marsal has it for Tech. Golden Suns pushing. Marsal lays it back for Wyrick, wide open left wing. It's off to the right, no good. Thompson and Hill track down the long rebound for Tech. And that pass intercepted by Reether. Reether goes right at Wyrick. She's fouled by Wyrick going up. With 3.05 to go, Lauren Reether going to the line for two free throws. Reether two for two at the line today. Another 20-point outing for her. First one on the way is good. Second one from Lauren is also good, and SNU leads by two, 59-57. Timeout, Trent May. 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it here with 3.05. Southern Nazarene with the lead. Arkansas Tech, eight of 28 in the second half. SNU just three of 10 in the fourth quarter. 11 of 23 in the second half, just a tick under 50%. SNU at 37.5% for the game would be the first time they've shot under 40% this season. Still three three minutes and change to go. Hill inbounds up ahead to Thompson. Gives it back to her and she'll bring it up. Marsal holding, gives it to Thompson right elbow. Gives it to Marsal on the speed cut. Layup is good. And Wilbur's furious over on the sideline that there was no foul called there. Not a lot of fouls have been called At the basket, here's Reether back the other way. Left-hand layup is no good, and Wagner has the miss for Tech. Marsal across half court, tied at 59, two and a half minutes to go. Left wing to Hill. Gassaway in defense. Hill drives into the paint, shovels to Thompson, went off her hands, saves it as Marsal controls up top with 10 on the clock. Marsal. Picks up her dribble, over to Wyrick with five, with four. Wyrick driving to the basket underneath Giles. Got it to go at the shot clock buzzer. And Tech takes a two-point lead with two minutes to play. 61-59, Golden Suns trying to be the first to knock off SNU. Nice give and go. Reether over to Giddy on the pick and roll. And Giddy ties it at 61, 145 to play. Wyrick back the other way quickly for Arkansas Tech. Reether in defense with four fouls. Wyrick pulls up from 15 and knocks it down again. Haley Wyrick, 23 points. Timeout Tech with 1.34 to go. 63-61. Arkansas Tech with the lead. Tons of time left. SNU needing to come back here to keep their unblemished record intact. Haley Wyrick, 23 points off the bench, 10 of 15 from the field, 
three of six from three-point range. She has been the difference this afternoon for Arkansas Tech. SNU ball on the baseline. Giles, Gassaway, Bay, Reether, and Giddy. And put Giles in possession, bringing it up. Reether off the ball to start this possession. Giles tried to give it to Reether. It crowded on the handoff. Fouls on Marsal. Her third personal foul. She picked up two in the first quarter. There's the third foul on Tech, SNU with three team fouls themselves. Giles. And another foul on Marsal, crowding on the dribble handoff. And that's four on Marsal and four on Tech. One twenty-five to go. Bessonu does the exact same thing, and they will. This time, Reether's given space. Reether, step back three, hits on the way, and it's good! 64-63, Southern Nazarene. Here's Wyrick. Still a minute to play, and Reether picks her pocket and draws the foul! The senior, Lauren Reether, coming up huge for the Crimson Storm! The go-ahead three, and a huge steal on the other end. Still 105 to play, but Lauren Reether can put SNU up three with two free throws here. First one on the way, it's off the back iron, no good. Still 64-63. Second one from Lauren is good. Two point lead for SNU, a minute to go. 65 63. Here's Marceau behind the screen to the basket. Denied by Giddy at the rim. She tries it again out to Thompson. 18 foot jumper to tie is good. We're tied with 50 seconds to go. 65 apiece. Reether behind the pick from Giddy. Outside Bay. Mismatch inside. Giddy outside Reether. Reether, top of the key. Pulls the trigger for three. Oh, it's good! Cold blooded from Lauren Reether with 26 seconds to go. And SNU leads 68 65. No hesitation from the former Pirate. He's taking away Tex Joy in the final minutes. Reether up to a new career high, 29 points. None bigger than the final six. What an afternoon for Reether, who picked up her fourth personal foul with three minutes to go in the third quarter. And she has been nails all season for the Crimson Storm. But especially when they needed her most in this final minute. So we wait through the timeout, quick check on scores. Around the league, Harding leads Oklahoma Baptist 56-54. Oklahoma Baptist basketball with 30 seconds to play. Monticello leads at Southeastern 58-56 with 12 seconds 
to go. It's Southwestern 58, Washita 53, two minutes to play. Southern Arkansas going to knock off East Central 76-62, 46, 40 seconds left. And Northwestern leading Henderson State 57-49 with 1.22 to go. Here, 25.8 seconds left, 68-65 SNU. Hill inbounds to Thompson in the backcourt who gives it to Marsal. Marsal guarded by Giles, 20 seconds. Marsal behind the screen from Thompson, heads right. Right of the paint, gives it to Thompson on the nice curl. Thompson puts it in for two. Timeout called by Trent May to advance the basketball. 14.6 seconds left. SNU as Tech opted for the quick two. We'll see what SNU draws up. Obviously trying to get the ball in, probably in Reether's hands. 77% at the line this season. Of the five out on the floor, Carly Gassaway, five of six at the free throw line this year. Reether, 77%. Giles, 77%. Jenna Bay, 74%. Giddy, 55%, but she's two for two today. Double-double for Giddy, 10 points, 10 rebounds, seven assists. Yes, and you're going to circle the wagons here. Inbounds comes quickly to Reether and Prater Fowler. With 13 and a half seconds left. That's her third. And Reether at the line to push this back to a three point game. Twenty nine for Lauren Reether. Four three pointers, four steals. First free throw is good. One more for the senior who has 30 points today. Second one is pure. Timeout, Dave Wilbers to advance the basketball. 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it here with 13 and a half seconds left. Then a tremendous game. Very even contest. Tex had some Really big moments. Haley Weirich has been outstanding for the Golden Suns off the bench. 23 points today. But Lauren Reether has been the story for SNU. 31 points. 10 of 19 shooting, 4 of 7 from three-point range, 7 of 8 from the free throw line. SNU needs one more defensive stop with 13 and a half seconds left. Thompson, Prater, Wyrick, Hill, and Marsal out there for Tech right now. Prater to inbound. Comes to Hill, who got behind Jenna Bay, lost the ball! Bay gives it up to Reether, who's fouled by Marsal. The pass went right off the hands of Alex Hill. It was a good look from Prater. Messia Marsal checks out with her fifth personal foul. Jordan Rollins in, and Lauren Reether can ice it right here for Southern Nazarene. Hill had gotten behind Jenna Bay. First free throw is no good. Hill had gotten behind Jenna Bay. It was a good look. She had a wide open lane to the basket. Would have extended the game again. Second one from Reether is good. It's a four point game. Prater shovels to Hill. Fires a right wing three. That's an air ball. And fittingly, hidden's up in the hands of Lauren Reether. And the Crimson Storm win again. 71 to 67, the final score as SNU moves to 14 and 0 
this season in 8-0 and in conference play. Make it 18 straight at home, 28 straight in the regular season. As gutty a performance as we've seen all year from the Crimson Storm. What a showing. Nails from Lauren Reether down the stretch. The Crimson Storm took Tech's absolute best shot today and came up with yet another win this afternoon at the Sawyer Center. In the final score, 71-67. As Georgia Adams and Emily Monahan carry Lauren Reether off pseudo on their shoulders. Didn't quite get her all the way to the shoulders, but carried her off the court nonetheless. What an intense atmosphere this afternoon in SNU. Once again, passing the test and staying undefeated. SNU ends the game shooting 40% from the field on the nose, eight of 21 from three point range, 15 of 20 at the free throw line. Tech, 45% from the field, five of 14 from three point range. They missed all six in the second half. And six of 13 at the free throw line, leaving them 14 of 33 on the two game trip between here and Oklahoma Baptist and a combined margin of loss of eight points. Individually, or excuse me, let's look at the other numbers. Tech 37 to 30 on the boards, 13 to eight on the offensive glass, nine nine in second chance points this afternoon. Tech pulled in nine offensive rebounds in the second half alone this afternoon. Just nine turnovers today for SNU, leading to nine Tech points. 13 turnovers for Tech, leading to 11 SNU points. Nine to seven edge and fast break points today for Arkansas Tech. Individually, for the Crimson Storm, 32 points, a career high for Lauren Reether. Five steals, five rebounds, four assists. 10 of 18 from 19 from the field, four of seven from deep, eight of 10 from the free throw line. 10 points each for Emily Monahan and Hannah Giddy. Hannah Giddy just four of 14 from the field, but had a double-double with 10 rebounds, seven assists, and two blocks as well. Eight points off the bench for Carly Gassaway, nine for Jenna Bay, two points for Abby Giles to round out the scoring for SNU. 23 points off the bench led the way for Tech from Haley Wyrick. 14 points for Claire Grace Prater. Seven points for Macia Marsal. Macia Marsal, eight points for Dana Thompson. Five for Alex Hill. Four for Julie Wagner. Four for Shelly Butler. And two for Jordan Rollins to round out the individual numbers for Arkansas Tech. A tremendous game. SNU just two of 13 from the field in the first quarter. They trailed 21 to 11 after one 37-31 at halftime. Scored 20 in each of the final three periods to get their 14th win of the season, 71 to 67. The final score today. Quick check on the other scores that were tight. Oklahoma Baptist tied it up. They are in overtime with Harding right now. Tied at 56. Just a minute gone by in the period. Arkansas Monticello gets their first conference win. 59-56 over Southeastern as the Savage Storm remain winless in GAC play. Southwestern gets the win over Washita today. 66-55. It was Southern Arkansas 78 and East Central 62 today. And winding down the final minute, 62-54 Northwestern leads Henderson State with 51 seconds remaining this afternoon up in Alva. We'll keep you posted on that as well as the Harding Oklahoma Baptist score. Harding now leads by four with three minutes to go. Here, though, we're going to step aside, take a break, and when we come back, we'll be joined by SNU coach Trent May and our player of the game. That's all coming up next. 
here on the SNU Post Game Show. This is SNU Basketball. And welcome back. We're joined by player of the game, Lauren Reether. 71 to 67, Southern Nazarene gets the exciting win over Arkansas Tech. And Lauren, you'd, you'd love to win every game by 30, but it's always good to have some experience in those close ones as well. And I think we learned a lot about you guys as a team this week, especially here this afternoon. Yeah, we, um, my voice is gone. I'll give you everything I have. Um, 
but we are a gritty team, and we're we're trying to get better at starting off faster. But once we kick it in, we're you know we're very hard to beat. And that team came in here and gave us a close game last year as well. And we knew that it's it's another conference game. Anything can happen. Um, and like I said last game, um, that our record doesn't matter when we come into each game. It's one and zero every day. So. Shout out to our team and uh, my teammates for giving everything they have, and we were able to pull it off. What was the key to the comeback today? Just shots weren't falling early, but you guys weathered the storm, scored 20 in each of the last three quarters. What was the key to that? Just keep going. I mean, I told Giddy, I said, you can miss 50 in a row. I don't care. Keep pushing it at him. Keep pushing at him because the 51st shot may go in, and it may be with 20 seconds left in the fourth quarter. So... No matter what, we kept pushing through. We knew um, some of the stuff that we normally do finish, we weren't getting, and so we had to really pick it up on the defensive end, of course. Uh, and so um, we just stuck to what we do and played it out, and it worked out for us. So It was actually your shot that went in with 20 seconds to the left to give you guys the three-point lead. What's that like, being able to take the big shot and hit it in the closing moments? Yeah, in the timeout, you know, I may have been in foul trouble all game or, you know, whatever the case may be, but no matter what, everybody believes in me to shoot that shot. And um, I knew that if it was open that, you know, it's probably a good look for me, um, especially coming off of the game on Thursday. And so, you know, it's just another shot we work on every day, another shot that I I know I can hit. And um, my teammates do a really, really great job of, you know, allowing me to have the freedom to shoot those and um, are very confident in me as well. So... I can't thank them enough for that. What's this year been like for you? You, I mean, you've, you've been in college forever. You know, you've slaved away at two different really good programs, put in a lot of really hard work. How gratifying has this year been for you personally so far? <laughs> it's been really, really great. Uh, it looks like somebody's trying to sneak, sneak in the frame. <laughs> Y'all better know her. You, don't, you better know her. If you don't, you better know her. All American needs to know this girl because that's an all American. Coach, um, what was the question? <laughs> How gratifying has this year been for you? Yeah. It's been great. I mean, we have a great, great team, and um, every year has just continued to be better and better. And not just for me as an individual, but for me and my teammates. Um, we have a great team, and we all get along, and we love each other so much. And it makes these games easier because we know we're always going to have each other's backs. So, I mean, it's just. Last one, best one. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Lauren, congrats on the win on the big game, and uh, we'll see you back here in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. That's Lauren Reether. We'll be back with Trent May and let him talk about Lauren Reether here in just a minute. And we're back with Coach Trent May. SNU wins 71-67 over Arkansas Tech today. And Trent, that was a intense matchup there. But you guys found another way to win. Found a way, Luke. Found a way. Hey, listen, I have a great staff. Man, they, they do a great job. They know what they're doing. They know how to put our players in successful situations. And, you know, you got to have a scout. you got to have a report on the other team, what they do well, what they don't do well, um, what they could potentially do. And, um Starts there. Then you got a you got a team who, even when it's kind of shaky and it's not going right at times as the way we would want it to go right, um, you know they persevere. They have guts. They have grit. They have any, anything you adjective you want to use in there of how to describe a championship team. Man, that culture matters. Uh, that character matters. Um, that preparation. That that staying in the fight. Not going your way. You lose a round. You lose another round. You lose a round. But it's. You know, you take a punch, you give a punch, you take a punch, you take three more punches, but you're still standing. Not going down, not going, hey, you know what, we've had a good run so far, but you know what, not our day. Um, that won't come out of our players' mouths ever. Um, so that's a great thing. That's one of the, things, one of the many things I love about my team is uh, we're never going to back down, never going to stop fighting. You're a self-proclaimed greedy guy. You want to, you know, you'd love to win all of them by 30, but when you win games like this, 
how much does that prepare you for the inevitable close games down the road? Well, I told him afterwards in the locker room that so important to remember this, uh, of how tough you are, um, even when it doesn't look the best and even if it's not something that we're, um, that's part of our standards, man, be in the fight, have a chance, give yourselves a chance by the little things. And, you know, they did that, Luke, they did that. Um, you know, and, and not everyone played the game they wanted to, but you you got to find someone's got to keep fighting for you. Um, Lauren Reather did that for her team today. Um, Abby Giles um, isn't uh, the most healthiest right now. She battled and played through a lot of pain. Um, Emily played hard. Yeah, Hannah Giddy played hard. I mean, it just and so you just you got to stay in it. You got to stay in the fight, man. Give yourself a chance. Stay in the fight. Lauren Reather, you we've talked just individually just between us about you know how special she's been this year how awesome is it for you as a coach to see all the work she's put in and see it all coming together her senior year well you know i love it a lot of people work um you're, if you don't work in our program chances are you're not going to go very far um she has stayed consistent even though we always say hard work pays off but it may not always pay off the time you want it to but eventually keep doing the right spot Sorry, keep doing the right things and put yourselves in the right spot. Good things happen. That's what we tell all our kids, right? Good, th nothing good after midnight happens, right? Put yourself in the right spot. Be in the right spots. Be in the right spots in life. Her right spots were being in the gym relentlessly. You know, they didn't pay off her freshman year or sophomore year, or did they? Right? Because they built, they built a foundation in her that says, I'm going to work hard, and I'm going to stay in the fight. And because of that year after year, summer after summer, workout after workout, look what she's doing now. Not everyone can write that story, but if you don't work hard, you'll never have the story. That's what I'm super proud of. I mean, you know, and again, Jenna Bay, Anna Kukoli with a last minute, 37 seconds in the first half, got an offensive rebound, brought a spark, brought it in some energy. You know, so all the way around. Um, I know you're asking about Lauren, but those are players who hopefully see the things that Lauren's doing to emulate going, man, just keep working. Because if you don't work again, you'll never have what you had tonight or all this, you know, the third, the – 13 games prior to tonight. You know, Lauren's been a catalyst, but constant effort, constant constant good attitude, the right attitude, constant being a great coachable teammate. You know, put yourself in the right spot, good things happen. Absolutely. Well, Trent, congratulations on another hard-fought win. Look forward to seeing you guys back here at the Sawyer Center in two weeks. And it was cold outside today. It's cold. Um, and the gym, it was awesome. Another great atmosphere, a lot of people cheering us on. Man, that means a lot. Um, this is a great place to be, Luke. Super thankful, super blessed. We're going to keep at it. Roll Storm. Absolutely. That's Trent May. We'll step aside and come back with the start of the men's game here in just a moment. <laughs> 